So it's been a while now since we've actually talked about Black Ops 4, but I think it's about time we hop back on the train and talk once again about the game coming out in October. And I know it's been a while since we've uploaded any videos talking about Black Ops 4, but throughout the next few weeks and months, as we get closer and closer to the release of the game and the beta, we're going to have many more videos coming talking about Black Ops 4. And today, we're going to be talking about probably the biggest criticism of the game. Okay, not the biggest criticism. The Black Ops Pass we'll talk about in a completely separate video. But today, we're going to be talking about something that has been talked about on YouTube many times before, and that is the lack of a campaign in Call of Duty Black Ops 4. It's been talked about the fact that there is less content in this game than ever before is simply false and not true whatsoever. In fact, I'm going to go out on a limb and say this Call of Duty game, Black Ops 4, is going to have the most content that has ever been released in a Call of Duty game. And I'm saying this without playing the full launched game, without any of this, but there's a specific reason for that. First of all, Black Ops 3 had the most content ever at release of a Call of Duty game, and I believe Treyarch is just going to up the ante on that that much more. Now, of course, what we have with Black Ops 4 is your normal multiplayer, which you've got in every single Call of Duty game. You have your Zombies experience, which we're getting at least three maps at launch, possibly four with the Black Ops Pass, but once again, we'll talk about that in the future. And then on top of that, you are also getting the brand new mode, Blackout, which is kind of replacing the campaign, which is, of course, as everyone knows, a Battle Royale mode. Again, something we're not going to talk about too much in this video. Yet, people are still complaining, talking about how there is a lack of content in the game, and how there is no story and how they don't want to buy it because there is no story. And we'll talk about that in a second, but what a lot of people don't realize is that they are putting almost a mini campaign for every single specialist character that is in the multiplayer. They're adding a mission that kind of gives a little bit of backstory to each character. In fact, they actually announced this at the original reveal of the game, but went a little bit more in depth at a press conference at E3 on the YouTube live stream. And this is what they had to say about the missions for these specialist characters. Yeah, so it's designed around our... Um the, the fiction which is grounded in our multiplayer universe this time around, and yeah. that's set in the, the years between Black Ops 2 and Black Ops 3, so it gives yeah. a little bit of a setup for who the specialists are, why they're here, who they're fighting for, how they're connected to one another, um, and it gives uh, players a chance to really kind of master each specialist for their abilities and their, their unique powers and their uh, capabilities. The little mini missions in Yeah, little missions right? that, that just help you kind of get to know the specialists better and, and master the gameplay. Now, as stated in that kind of snippet there, these characters are going to be featured between the time of Black Ops 2 and Black Ops 3, establishing them in this kind of multiplayer universe. And this is something that's become more and more popular in various multiplayer games, is having a backstory behind all of the individual characters and the universe itself. A great example of this is the current, probably most popular game ever, which is Fortnite, which every single season kind of announces a new snippet of story that explains the universe, why it looks the way it does and even why it plays the way it does. Now believe it or not, this is not actually the first time that the Black Ops multiplayer universe has a story behind it. The original story in the multiplayer actually began back in Call of Duty Black Ops 3. Now back in Black Ops 3 there was a rumor circulating that the original campaign in Black Ops 3 was actually supposed to revolve around the various specialist characters but was then scrapped and replaced with the Black Ops 3 campaign we know today. Now I couldn't find anything confirmed this, but I heard various other speculation videos talking about this, so by no means is this confirmed, but it's out there, people have said it before, and I just wanted to throw it in there. Now, what we had in Black Ops 3 was no specific missions or anything like that to do with the specialist character, but we had backstories in the way of intel. So there was these little voice clips and things you could read about every individual character that gave a background on them and kind of each character's backstory. Don't sweat it. I get that reaction all the time. I understand why you find me unsettling. The question is, do you? I'm now 72% enhanced and augmented. I passed the point of mostly human a long time ago. Now in this video I'm not going to go into crazy depth about each character's backstory and the entire overarching story of the Black Ops 3 multiplayer, but if you would like to see that, all you have to do is let me know down in the comment section. I have made some videos about this before. If you would like to see every single specialist character's backstory, or maybe just all of them in one video, let me know what you think down in the comment section below. I think it would make for a pretty interesting series, but today I'm specifically going to be talking about the fact that everything that happened in Black Ops 3's multiplayer happened within a simulation, and how that is actually not true in Black Ops 4. 
So first things first, let's start out with how we know Black Ops 3's multiplayer actually takes place in a simulator. So first things first, Black Ops 3 was the first ever multiplayer with specialist characters. Before that, every single time you played a multiplayer in Call of Duty, you were playing as unnamed soldiers randomly in a giant war battle. Whereas in Black Ops 3, you were playing as individual characters that somehow kept dying and coming back to life. The explanation for this is that they were in a simulation, and every time they were dying, they weren't dying in real life, they were simply dying in the simulation. But, of course, I have more evidence than just that. The next piece of evidence falls in a specific transmission that you actually unlock once you've unlocked all of the hero gear for every character within Black Ops 3. And the transmission says this. <clears throat> uh, based on the requirements laid out at the start of this procurement process, I'm certain that the intelligence gathered in the dossiers in front of you will lead you to conclude that the eight referenced individuals will be the best subjects for your program. Further, I believe that the plant you specified be placed amongst them will independently verify my findings. As instructed, the intelligence was gathered covertly, using a number of... Are you certain they were unaware of your surveillance? Yes, sir. I'd stake my reputation. There's more at stake here than your reputation. Sir. Yes, sir. Very well. Leave us. We were never here. We have never spoken. So just as a quick explanation of what that actually means, the procurement process that they are talking about is the actual simulation itself. As we know, at the release of Black Ops 3, there were nine specialist characters, as it mentioned in the transmission, eight of them were part of this procurement process. One of the nine specialist characters was actually a spy who collected all of these characters and actually put them in the simulation to see whether they were actually good test subjects to become basically super soldiers for this unnamed company that this person is talking to. Now this transmission simply leads to more questions we have about this whole situation. For example, why are these characters being collected? Which company is doing this and why do they want super soldiers? Which one of the nine specialist characters is actually the a spy and finally the 10th specialist character who is added later in the game blackjack how does he tie into the whole simulation so now as we go into black ops 4 it is possible as we get these mini missions for the various specialist characters we may actually learn more of the backstory of how the simulation actually started and more information amongst the actual specialist characters themselves now the final bit of information i wanted to focus on is that the fact that certain specialist characters that are in black ops 3 actually aren't in Black Ops 4 and why that is, and specifically how certain specialist characters not being in Black Ops 4 can point towards the story of the multiplayer for Black Ops 4 not taking place within a simulation. And it all revolves around a statement that David Vondahar made at E3. In, in this context, uh, what we're talking about is taking the specialists that we, you know, we started with in Black Ops 3, um, there are new specialists, all specialists are rebuilt or reimagined where they need to be, and everything they have is very grounded and realistic, it's not fantastical in any way. He says all of the abilities are very grounded and not fantastical in any way. Why is this important? Because many of the characters that have been left out, their abilities only make sense in a simulation. One great example of this is Reaper. Now what you have to understand is how the entire thing works. Now how the battle simulation actually works is actually brought up in the real campaign for Black Ops 3 with something they call the DNI or Direct Neural Interface. Basically a computer that is implanted in people's heads and then they can interface with various electronics including computers where the battle simulation takes place. So as mentioned, Reaper is one of these characters that is being left out of Black Ops 4, and you, when you really read his abilities, you can understand why. So the first one here is Psychosis. The description of it is, Sophisticated hacking subroutines penetrate the DNI systems of Reaper's foes, creating multiple copies of the deadly machine in their minds. So once again, a character's ability that wouldn't make sense outside of the simulation, specifically with characters who do not have DNIs or direct neural interfaces. Hence, why one once again, Reaper is not in Black Ops 4. Another character that is not returning, in my opinion, because it's a little too futuristic, would be Spectre. And then finally, we have Prophet. This one is interesting because Prophet is returning, but it appears he is returning without any of the same abilities that he had in Black Ops 3. So Prophet's weapon in Black Ops 3 was called the Tempest, which was basically an electricity gun. And as you can see in this promotional image, Prophet appears here looking very different than he did in Black Ops 3, but also appears 
appearing without the Tempest. In this image, he appears with a sniper rifle that looks nothing like the electricity gun that we see in Black Ops 3. However, the thing I really wanted to focus on here was his specialist ability in Black Ops 3. And his glitch ability specifically states that Prophet's affinity for electronics allows him to hack the battle simulation, returning him to an earlier point in time. It specifically mentions the battle simulation, which takes place during the Black Ops 3 multiplayer, and would not make any sense outside of a battle simulation. Now, where this leaves us is that if Prophet does have his glitch ability in Black Ops 4, this means Black Ops 4 takes place within a simulation. If Prophet's ability is something other than glitch, which I think it will be, this means the simulation is not in the Black Ops 4 multiplayer and is only in Black Ops 3, which makes a lot more sense because DNIs, which is the way the battle simulation actually works, isn't introduced into Black Ops 3. And remember, as stated earlier, Black Ops 4 takes place between Black Ops 2 and Black Ops 3. So what to expect out of the storyline coming from the Black Ops 4 multiplayer would be, first of all, how does this simulation come to be? How does it get planned? How does it all work together? Possibly who is behind the simulation, which company, and also finding out which one of the specialist characters is actually the spy who kind of is the puppet master behind the simulation and Black Ops 3. So a lot of really important things that we may be finding out in Black Ops 3. But from here, I'm curious to hear what you guys have to say. What do you think of this whole backstory? On top of that, what do you think the story is going to be like going into Black Ops 4? And specifically, if you would like to hear the story behind all of the specialist characters in Black Ops 3, let me know down in the comments. That's definitely something I could do definitely something I'd be interested in. So if you would like to see that, hit that like button. Let me know down in the comments. Also, if you're new to the channel and like what you see, you can always hit that subscribe button to stay up to date on all my videos. But guys, I hope you enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, peace out. We are, we are reaching for